Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for coming on board for this session about launching the ECA College of Health and Sciences. I'm uh, happily joined by uh, Andrew Krevold, uh, who's our Chief Operating Officer. We have got Mahima Sial, who's our um, Admissions Manager for Private Higher Education, and uh, Dr. Muhammad uh, Khalifa, who is our um, Dean of our new and exciting addition to the ECA family. As always, we'll go through a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, so the session will commence on the hour, which we have done. The session is being recorded and this will be placed up on our um, agent portal um, uh, through our YouTube channel. The audience noise has been muted um, to avoid a background noise. However, you do have access to a Q&A function. If you do have any questions as we go along through the session, um, please use the Q&A function and we will address those questions um, throughout the session. If you're having any difficulties with your audio visual or uh, with the general comments, please use the chat function as well. Um, over the, in the next day or so, you'll receive an email um, requesting a little bit of feedback in relation to this session, um, or if you come ac across any other questions which you um, thought about after the session, uh, we'll, be, we'll gladly answer those ones as well. But to begin with, we'll just talk about um, the broader Education Centre of Australia group. So um, obviously, um, the College of Health and Sciences is our latest addition. However, we are growing significantly with our course offerings for all international students. Um, in addition to the uh, Masters of Health Management program, which we'll be talking about in detail later, we'll also have additional um, health science area courses. So we'll have uh, undergraduate, undergraduate uh, Bachelor of nursing plus post postgraduate uh postgraduate uh entry into nursing at the university of canberra in the sydney hills so we're just uh waiting for that one to commence where we have it added additional courses uh for them uh at swinburne masters of data science and mba with a variety of different specializations we also have additional courses at victoria university which is uh, Masters of uh, IT by Research, MBA, which will start next year, Business Analytics and Supply Chain Management, which has already commenced. We've been very aggressive in the online uh, space as well. So we have um, a variety of different options there. Um, one of those is London Metropolitan University. So we have gone multinational. We do have uh, university options over in the UK now as well. And there'll be a few additional um, options coming in the near future. We have got an APIC uh, capacity increase and um, subject to CRICOS, we will have uh, a campus in Brisbane as well in the very near future. We have got the Masters of e-learning through the Higher Education Leadership Institute down in Melbourne. And what we'll be talking about extensively today is the postgraduate programs in health management, the Masters of Health Management, both in um, both in Sydney, Parramatta, uh, and Brisbane. So I'll pass over to Andrew Krevald, who will give a little bit of an introduction and a bit of a welcome for the ECA College of Health Sciences. So over to you, Andrew. Uh, you're on mute. We've got oh, that phrase of 2021. Thank you very much, Stefan. I uh, was on mute. So, um, and it's uh, my very great pleasure to welcome everyone to our webinar today. Um, I'm also based here in Sydney and uh, have been working with the ECA group for uh, just over a year now and um, really enjoying working with such a vibrant and progressive um, organization. Um, we have been. Uh, working on the creation of the College of Health Sciences since uh, 2018. Um, and it's fantastic to get to the point now where we are um, accepting applications for students to start with those in the new year. Um, 
why would we uh, why would we create a college of of health sciences? That's a that's a very good question, and I think the key the key driver behind that is the fact that healthcare is the largest and fastest growing industry sector in Australia, and and, a, and is a um, a large and fast growing industry sector across the world. Um, in the Asia Pacific, we I think there are around two hundred thousand health managers short in terms of the demand for people with that um, skill set. Uh, and that provides a wonderful opportunity for us as a new college to uh, provide graduates who um, have experience in the health sector and who can um, contribute um, at a management level um, to those systems and providers across the region. Um, for example, just in India, I think there's uh, about 44,000 health managers required each and every year up until 2030, just to keep up with the current uh, people to um, health manager ratios. Um, locally here in Australia, uh, another key factor is that 30% of the health management workforce in Australia is over 55 years old. Um, and I expect that similar kind of um, uh, profiles in, in other parts of the, of the world as well. And so there are thousands of new health managers that we need here um, in order to replace those people who are reducing their hours um, and then transitioning through to retirement in the next few years. And so that, that's the, those are the key drivers around the creation of the College of Health Sciences. Um, we want to be, and our, our vision is to be, a thriving uh, private higher education provider focused on the aspirations of our students, but also on our academics and employers and the broader community and stakeholders, uh, not only in Australia, but throughout the, throughout the region. And uh, we uh, will become a, a college known for delivering high quality education programs um, that prepare students for enhanced professional practice and leadership in their fields, and whilst also um, engendering lifelong learning and strong ethical behaviors. So we've been uh, very much concentrating on that and creating that um, learning and support and student experience environment over the last two or three years. Um, uh, a lot of people within ECA and, and external experts have been involved in that process and say so now we're really looking forward at, um, uh, to the opportunity for us to do what we've been working towards all those over that last period. And that is to, to bring students in and take advantage of that fantastic learning experience that we've been designing for our students. So that's a nice little segue actually for me to hand over to uh, Dr. Mohammed Khalifa. Um, Mohammed's far too um, far too nice a guy to introduce himself, but he is, I would I would add, a medical doctor as well as being a, a PhD from Macquarie University here in Australia. Has a lot of experience working as a doctor, but also improving health systems all over the world and getting more bang for the buck for people who who run major health systems. And it's a real pleasure to have Mohammed uh, heading up the academic team here at the College of Health Sciences. So, Mohammed, I'll hand up handball over to you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you. Um, so, um, to introduce the Master of Health Management, um, uh, let's go to the next slide, Stephanie. Okay. Yeah. So, we have a group of learning outcomes to this program. This program primarily uh, equips and qualifies uh, graduates to acquire new positions in the area of health management, um, regardless of their backgrounds, clinical backgrounds, whether they were uh, uh, nurses or allied health professionals. Uh, the, the major point is uh, that there are two main pathways through which uh, health managers acquire their positions or uh, through which we enhance and promote the uh, uh, positions of a health manager. One of them is to, to be promoted from a practitioner, a clinician, into a head of a group, a head of a department, head of nursing department, for example. Uh, the other uh, way is to uh, completely shift a career from uh, the clinical practice of nursing or a line health professional, for example, into uh, pure health management, which needs uh, more focus on performance improvement, uh, quality improvement, patient safety, uh, effectiveness of treatments and efficiency uh, in managing healthcare services and facilities. 
So um, our program is made of um, uh, the Master of Health Management. Actually, it's a, it's a nested program that is made of three components. Uh, one of them is the Graduate Certificate in Health Management, which includes the first three units. So once uh, the candidates complete their first three units, they can exit the program with a Graduate Certificate in Health Management. Completing six units, they can exit with a diploma, a graduate diploma in health management and completing the 10 units plus a capstone unit, a capstone project, which includes a research project. Uh, this will qualify them to uh, get their master of health management. Um, I can take you uh, in a brief tour um, into the canvas, which is our learning uh, management system. Um, can I share screen? Okay, I will uh, stop sharing over here. Yes. So through uh, here we can um, um, see the, the different uh, courses that we have. Uh, now we are in the uh, phase of transitioning from the uh, typical mo mode of face-to-face -face delivery of the program into uh, the e-learning, the blended, actual, actually the blended uh, mode, which includes e-learning plus face-to-face. -face. So for example, one of these units here is unit number two about governance, uh, safety and quality in healthcare. Uh, there's an introduction here, a unit map and study guides and uh, tips on getting started. On the left side, we can find more details about the modules. Uh, so module one, for example, includes two main topics. When we get into, uh, for example, the overview of the module, we find the introduction. Uh, we find the learning outcomes and the required readings and extra readings. Students can navigate either by clicking next or by browsing again from the same uh, list on the left, uh, on the left side. Um, then they can uh, download, they can read and download the materials here. Uh, if they minimize this, they will find either a, an extra reading or a video um, uh, telling them more details about practicing uh, the topic, the clinical governance, uh, for example, in this area. Um, they also have um, um, discussions. They can get to uh, different assignments. They can get to the quizzes. Uh, for example, um, th these quizzes are designed mainly to check their understanding. So I can check my understanding after I complete one module. So taking the quiz, for example, they can uh, answer and get uh, the marks after they complete the questions. And then they can, they can repeat uh, over and over the uh, um, uh, taking this quiz so that they can uh, get the best understanding and participate in the discussions. Uh, three main components are there in the um, um, in each of the modules. Uh, one of them is um, the uh, lecture itself, which we includes discussion about uh, the different topics that we are presenting. And then we have another workshop uh, each uh, module each week. And we have also uh, the uh, assignment. And there is a session about the assignment. Um, I can see that we have questions here. Um, let me stop sharing here and go back to the slides. What are the entry requirements to get to, to enroll into this course? Very good. Uh, you a couple of slides ahead, we'll come to that slide uh, in due course. So. Um, okay, I, I will uh, I will share again. Okay. So just confirming that you can see the Canvas page. Yes. Okay. So the the healthcare sector in Australia uh, includes over six hundred thousand people employed in different healthcare facilities. Um, uh, they work in primarily in uh, medicine, dentistry, nursing, allied health, aged care, and different areas. Uh, so when we uh, do our breakdown of all of the activities that we have in healthcare management, we find that this is related to supply chain, logistics, scheduling, planning, and implementation. 
So health managers can actually manage either the operational level of the healthcare services, which is the day-to-day -day activities, or they can be engaged more into the strategic level of planning and uh, 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 strategic implementation of uh, different uh, innovative, um, let's say, plans, models of care, uh, improvements, and so on. So when we look at uh, uh, the breakdown of the healthcare industry and the healthcare professionals, we find that uh, almost 60%, exactly 57% in Australia and 60% around the world um, are nurses. So the major workforce in healthcare uh, are nurses. Uh, and uh, almost 23% of the healthcare professionals are allied health. Uh, and then um, less than 20 or almost 20% are doctors and dentists. So our target will be focused more on the 80%, the 57% of nurses and the 23% of the allied health, because most of the physicians and dentists, they seek their uh, more clinical qualifications uh, and accreditation from their practices. So we are expecting that we have 80% of the uh, workforce in Australia, for example, this is more than, um, let's say, over 450,000 uh, people who can seek to be qualified in health management. Uh, next slide. So the need for health managers, um, we have now um, realized that there is an impact of the COVID and similar conditions or similar situations will require more health managers to intervene and to support the provision of healthcare. Um, healthcare managers also can be qualified in technology. Uh, they can support the information management, the analytics of data. Uh, they also work uh, to support the, the growing demand for healthcare services, especially with aging population in Australia and uh, worldwide. Uh, they also can support the patient-centered care, uh, focusing, uh, allowing the physicians and dentists and nurses to focus more on the patient needs, and they also can support the investment uh, in the infrastructure. Uh, next slide. So um, where do health management work? To make this brief, actually 50% of health managers, they work in hospitals and other medical centers. They can also work in uh, nursing homes, uh, daycare, professional uh, associations, community centers, mental health, drug treatment, rehabilitation. So all of these are places and locations where health managers can work. Very diverse outcomes there. So yeah. there's a uh, very big, uh, very big uh, spread across the industry. And uh, as we know, um, it's required all across the country and uh, internationally as well. Yeah, right. Um, next slide. So um, example of positions, um, we have, for example, a light health manager job. We can see on the right side, click um, the first one. So this is a real uh, job advertisement from seek.com uh, inside Australia at Brisbane. Um, looking for an allied health manager. And uh, we can see from the description, the different um, uh, job tasks and the different reporting lines. The next is the director of nursing and a nurse manager. And we can see in the advertisement, the range of the, the salary from 160,000 to 162 uh, each year, working hours full time, 38 hours per week and so on. The third one, for example, is the health service manager job. And we also can see a salary range and uh, introduction to the job, introduction to the organization and so on. Uh, the fourth one is a senior operations manager. Uh, we can see the organization, a brief about the organization and the key responsibilities that uh, the operations manager is going to handle on a daily basis. So these are examples. Um, and from that point, we can uh, talk more about the career outcomes where there is a potential for, uh, as I mentioned, to promote an existing position uh, as a nurse, for example, into a head nurse or completely shift uh, from the clinical context into uh, the management context. Um, 
So um, yes. yeah, we'll pass over to um, we'll pass over to Mahima now to go through the admissions requirements. Um, ju just a bit of a disclaimer here uh, before we begin. We do have a very diverse background with our agent network on board. Um, so if there are questions about GTE specifically, um, because of such a diverse background, we do recommend that you reach out to your respective account managers uh, for the GTE information. So this is very, very general uh, admissions requirements. So over to you, Mahima. Hello, everyone. Um, so talking about the academic requirements for courses at ECA College of Health Sciences, um, it should be an undergrad degree in a field relevant to healthcare or related field and two years of relevant work experience or a graduate diploma or graduate certificate in healthcare related field and two years relevant work experience and applicant must submit their application with a statement of service for all work experiences listed on the application. Um, some of the relevant uh, health fields are medicine, nursing, environmental health, aligned health. We have the complete list on the website for your reference. Uh, and on the website, we also have some alternate entry requirements uh, for your reference. Um, the English requirement will be IELTS overall of 6.5 with writing score of 6 or equivalent. Um, as other colleges, IELTS should be, it should not be more than two years old at the time of course commencement. And for GT, as Stefan mentioned, please reach out to your account managers for any specific GT requirements. Uh, specifying the country of interest as well, that, that will come in handy. Yeah. I'll pass over to Andrew. Uh, uh, this is uh, Andrew's baby, I guess, the, uh, the, the scholarship options which he's come up with. So uh, over to you, Andrew. I don't want, to, don't want to steal your thunder on this one. Well, thanks very much, Stefan. And um, yes, it's our, it's our pleasure to be offering um, a uh, health sector support scholarship um, for students coming into the new College of Health Sciences from 2022. Um, so uh, instead of the registered tuition fees listed there, that's uh, $10,000 per uh, trimester, really, or a, a full-time uh, graduate certificate would take you uh, one trimester or $10,000. Um, there's a 25% scholarship that takes those prices down to um, uh, $2,500 per uh, subject instead of the um, 3,333 um, that will be the, uh, the full price. And so that is uh, available to all students um, uh, coming uh, from overseas or enrolling in the program next year um, and uh, is available for the graduate certificate and the graduate diploma and the masters of health management students. So I think, I think it's that's a terrific offer. It's very competitive when you when you do benchmarking with other local providers, um, and uh, it's just it is it's a fantastic opportunity for students to get a, a high quality and uh, really uh, engaging um, uh, program designed for students and with a focus on students and the industry requirements, um, and to get that for a, a master's for less than thirty thousand Australian dollars is. Uh, with, we believe just a fantastic one-off kind of offer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's good, uh, important to acknowledge the importance of, uh, importance of the healthcare sector um, in managing what we've gone through over the last two years. So um, I think this uh, health sector scholarship is a fantastic acknowledgement as, as a thank you um, to what um, I guess the planet has been going through over the last uh, approximately two years. So back over to uh, Dr. Mohammed, talking about the uh, nursing versus health manager salaries. Thank you very much, Stefan. So um, here we have uh, two comparisons. Um, uh, um, co comparing first the nurse average salary in Australia, which is around uh, $86,000 uh, every year, compared to health managers uh, average salary, which is about 121 thousand every year. So we find almost uh, uh, 45 or 50 percent uh, raise uh, moving from uh, being a clinician into being uh, a health manager in Australia, for example. 
Um, very, very, very good opportunity. That's a significant raise there. So, um, very good opportunity there uh, as a as a starting uh, as a as a median salary as well. Sorry. Yeah, of course, because because um, it, it all depends on uh, the level of management, um, as we just mentioned before. Uh, when health managers are still at their uh, beginning of their career, they usually engage more with the operational management. But with time, experience and more qualification, they get uh, into the higher tactical and then the strategic levels of management. Uh, eventually, their salaries will increase based on their skills and uh, experiences and uh, performance over the, the few years or, or the, the years that they practice uh, their uh, job. Therefore, uh, we find uh, this is why we find that in uh, in New South Wales and and many other uh, states uh, inside Australia, we have uh, six levels of health managers. Uh, they start uh, from a minimum of seventy six thousand to one hundred and two, uh, and then they gradu graduate. Uh, gradually uh, increase from level one, two, three, four, up to level six, which is uh, which stops at one hundred and eighty-four thousand, uh, and starts from one hundred and sixty-eight thousand. Uh, so this is the uh, range of health managers. Above that is the senior executives in uh, government or private organizations. Um, but, but these are the scales for this, the basic six levels of health managers within the Australian government. Yeah, and I think all the agents on board are very excited to uh, about this course. So they're all the, um, in anticipation on when they can enrol students. So the first first available intake for um, the three uh, the Masters of Health Management plus the nested courses is the seventh of March, uh, two thousand and twenty two, uh, and followed by the twenty fifth of July, uh, two thousand and twenty two. In terms of the location, um, in terms of the location, uh, first location is in Sydney, uh, in Parramatta, just directly opposite Parramatta Station, a um, couple of doors down from uh, Westfield, um, very, very central, um, very central and uh, very um, in, the, in the heart of a very vibrant community as well. We also have a second location, and I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, Navin, who is our uh, our campus manager in Brisbane, um, up up there to to assist your students. Um, Andrew, can you just confirm when the the first intake will be in Brisbane? Thanks. Um, yes, Brisbane. Uh, that's also an exciting uh, opportunity for us. So. Uh, we are accepting students to enrol at the Brisbane campus uh, starting for term one next year. Um, depending on numbers, then we'll, we'll have that uh, delivered in person. But um, otherwise, then um, we've got a first class um, asynchronous online environment uh, that like Mohammed was showing earlier, um, where the students will be able to take part um, in their learning and then from term two, uh, at the latest, we'll have face-to-face -face teaching in Brisbane. So as you can see, it's right in the, in the heart of uh, central Brisbane, uh, a, couple of, a couple of blocks down from the Brisbane River. How to apply. Uh, so there, there is a bit of a process with this. It follows the regular apply.eca.edu.au uh, platform. You will, uh, over the next, um, over the next um, coming weeks, uh, our contract administrators will be contact, uh, contacting you for um, an extension of your ECA agreement to include um, the College of Health Sciences, which will open up your, um, your access to apply for this particular program. A couple of requests for, from an admissions perspective here. Please, um, now that we're all out of lockdown, um, or at least Melbourne from... Um, Melbourne from uh, tomorrow, I think. Um, if you can, uh, please make sure that all the documents are certified before uh, they come in and also include the uh, listed documents which Mahima requested earlier. It makes the process a lot smoother and uh, allows us to um, issue 
um, offer letters in a in a much more um, efficient manage uh, efficient way. As I mentioned um, before, this uh, this webinar will be on our agent portal later on. It'll also be on the ECA YouTube channel. Um, and how to apply, there is a video on how to apply. I haven't included it in this uh, document set. However, um, it is available um, within the ECA platform. Just like to acknowledge Naveen as well, who's just come on, on board for our, uh, for the, um, for the webinar and he will quite happily look after your, um, your lots of students uh, for the Brisbane campus. So, um, as I mentioned before, we do have that Q and A uh, chat, uh, uh, which is available. So if you've got any questions, uh, now is the time for it. Um, so we'll just go through and address this one. What are the entry requirements? We went through that before. Um, so I'll just backtrack a little bit so we can go through that, whoops, again. So we need the undergra undergraduate um, degree in, a, in the field, um, plus two years of professional experience or a graduate diploma or a graduate certificate. Um, Mohammed or Andrew, do you want to add a little bit on in terms of what experience or what background of students would be acceptable within the uh, within the health space? Um, uh, yes, certainly, certainly, I can do that, uh, uh, Stefan. Um, as Mahina was alluding to earlier, there there is a list uh, on the website under the. Um, uh, admission requirements for uh, the Master of Health, Health Management around the list of um, relevant uh, applied or allied uh, health um, professions. So um, I can read them out here around um, uh, health administration, environmental health, allied health, health information management, medicine, dentistry, nursing, psychology, um, research in biomedical health, human biological sciences, forensics, uh, food and pharmacology sciences, welfare and aged care, behavioral science, physiotherapy and sports and recreation uh, disciplines. So basically anything that's a, an allied health um, discipline um, uh, and uh, uh, facilitates you gaining jobs in the health sector, um, we would uh, consider to be appropriate for um, entry into the Masters in Health Management. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, sounds like a very diverse uh, target market for the uh, for for all our agents yeah. that are on board. Yeah, very much so. It's a, it's a diverse sector, the health sector, and so you know all of those uh, uh, professions have um, the need for for managers and for um, uh, for people from those professions. They can um, uh, leverage that uh, experience and knowledge into management positions across the health sector. It's not limited to just their particular area. Okay, perfect. The next two are related to um, work experience. Uh, mm. So, and I'll just answer these, one, uh, pass these over to you guys together. If the students don't have experience, can they do this course? And um, for, for example, if they've done a Bachelor of Nursing, if they're a Bachelor, bachelor of Nursing graduate, and they don't have the two years work experience, what are their options? So um, that's, a, that's a very good question. And, uh, and uh, whilst we certainly are looking for students who can um, bring some experience of working in the health sector to their um, studies in the program, and uh, that we think that will make a, a richer and uh, learning experience uh, for the students to be able to learn from each other and each other's skills and experience. We do recognise that some students won't have the full uh, number of years that we're, we're looking for to go straight into the Masters. And so for those students who haven't got the two years, I would encourage you to look at the admission requirements for the Graduate Certificate Programme, um, which isn't quite so specific about the number of years of experience required. Um, and uh, we can package that Graduate Certificate into the Master of Health Management for those 
students. Now for, for students, particularly nurses, who uh, for most nurses, they do get a significant amount of um, experience working in the sector as part of their nursing courses. Um, and I think you know, we would view that favorably in terms of um, meeting the experience requirement, particularly into the graduate certificate. Okay. Um, can a student package with an English course? I think that's one for nursing, but uh, sorry, for Mahima. Yeah, they can package with ELSIS. Yeah, uh, so they can package together with ELSIS. And at the yes. moment for offshore applications, we do have a uh, special scholarship offer available while the, uh, while the borders are, are um, closed. So just reach out to your account managers and they'll be able to uh, pass on the respective um, offer for um, ELSIS. Are we taking offshore applications? Yes, absolutely. The more the merrier, um, but um, they just need to meet the entry uh, requirements. Okay. Yes, I think the uh, students uh, are applying uh, from offshore who need to do some study offshore. Um, that's one of the advantages of being a, a new college. We've been we've been well aware of the need to be able to provide for those students, and so Mohammed and the team have developed a. Um, a learning environment which um, needs the, min the minimum kind of on-campus attendance. Um, so uh, all the materials are there available for students online and they will be supplemented, of course, with, with um, online webinars and, and what have you. But um, uh, the course has been designed principally for students to be self-contained. Okay. Um, whether PTE and TOEFL is acceptable? Um, yes is the um, simple answer to that one. Yep. So as long as, uh, as long as as long as it's gazetted by immigration, we're, we're pretty okay with the with the alternatives, but we need to be everything is kind of pegged back to the IELTS requirement, which is, which kind of uh, creates the the base score, but it, it's IELTS uh, 6.5, no band uh, writing of six writing of six. Um, However, the equivalent of that with a recognized um, qualification. Can you please confirm the tuition fees before and after scholarship? So let me flick through to the next slide. So we've got the graduate certificate in health management. Um, and keep in mind that these are nested programs. Um, so $10,000 before scholarship, $7,500 after scholarship, graduate uh, diploma of health management, $20,000 after scholarship is $15,000 and uh, Masters of Health Management before scholarship $40,000 um, down to $29,940. Uh, keeping in mind, um, assuming that the students pass the uh, first time through, uh, the maximum that they would pay is the $29,940. Career outcome and their assessment requirement. I'm um, not sure the career outcomes. We went through those before. I'll just throw over to the expert here. So Dr. Mohammed, if you could um, just provide a brief summary of that, of that one, please. Uh, well, yeah, thank you. Um, well, as we mentioned, uh, the career outcome is usually uh, comes in, 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 in one of two forms, either a promotion within the same pathway um, uh, for example, if I am uh, an, uh, a registered nurse, I could be promoted to uh, a nurse manager or head nurse or a manager for the nursing services within my uh, organization, my hospital, um, or completely shift from the clinical practice and from heading uh, the group of clinicians into being completely engaged in uh, health management and strategic planning. Um, the career also includes uh, both levels of positions, levels at the operational level and at the strategic level. The operational level includes the day-to-day -day activity management in a healthcare service. Uh, the operational, uh, the, the strategic level, sorry, uh, includes the strategic planning and uh, performance improvement. Uh, you might be serving at the government level. You might be serving at the uh, directorate of health in a regional area or um, on a state level. Okay, perfect. Um, 
Just reinforcing as well. So the next question was about, uh, are we offering this for offshore students? Absolutely. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, um, if you have specific GTE uh, questions, uh, just speak to your um, respective account manager. Okay, and just reinforcing this one as well. What about a fresh student, uh, freshly out of undergraduate without relevant experience? Would he or she be eligible? I believe so with uh, packaging under the graduate, certificate. graduate certificate. As long as that um, undergraduate award was in a health related field. Yes. Okay, this is a bit of a loaded question. How much does an international student need to pay to get a COE? Um, this will be, this will vary uh, depending on whether it's onshore or an offshore. Uh, we will um, acknowledge this question in a separate email um, to the, um, through your respective account managers. Um, can you please explain the scholarship again? 25% or so slightly yes, over? It's, it's, it's 25% uh, or a little bit more. Um, now the criteria for that are that you are a health sector um, qualified uh, individual um, and uh, because it's a health sector support scholarship um, and uh, uh, there is a uh, because it is a scholarship there's a requirement to maintain an, uh, your enrollment at the college through the program um, and to maintain good standing during that uh, period. Okay is part-time work acceptable? Um, the answer to that is yes any genuine work experience is acceptable whether it's part-time or full-time. Yes, and that's why the statement of service is important. Obviously, part-time um, experience, if it was a day a week over two years, that's not quite the same as two years full-time work experience. Um, and so uh, but we, we do uh, take those things into account when we're assessing the application. And so please do include, uh, include uh, students who have those part-time uh, work experience and we'll get back to you with, an, with a, a response on that basis. Can you make one recording for students to share about the future and salary? Um, as I mentioned before, this, um, this uh, webinar will be available within our YouTube channel and also on the agent, um, agent uh, um, platform. Uh, so you'll be able to use this resource into, into the future. Keeping in mind that the statistics are, are accurate as of today. Um, however, they may, may change slightly in, into the future as well. What's the maximum English course duration? Um, this will vary from country to country. So this comes down to, uh, we'll take this as a GTE question. So it varies from country to country. It can be 12 weeks from, 12, up to 12 weeks for some regions, but it can be a, a little bit longer for others. Is there a placement support after completion? Um, so with any ECA course, we do have a very active internship department. Uh, so part of the program and part of uh, what ECA is very passionate about is uh, delivering work ready uh, graduates. So um, there will be the internship department available um, for all um, students, um, all, all students uh, throughout the uh, throughout their journey within ECA, like we have been been doing throughout the uh, throughout um, the many years that ECA has been in operation. Do you offer an online English placement test in lieu of IELTS, Mahima? Yes, we do, but it will be only acceptable for a few countries. Uh, so it's it's a GT thing that we can uh, address countries countrywise with your account managers. Okay, and we've got uh, okay, lot, lots of excitement around work placement. Um, so yep, yeah, uh, is there is there a work placement integrated into the course, uh, Andrew and Mohammed? Not, uh, not, not at this point. Um, we're, we're exploring that, um, and uh, but I can't make any promises about that right now. I think the other thing I would mention is that um, 
there will be opportunities for people if as part of their research project at the end of the course um, to be doing some real life um, project work as well, um, which um, may, may or may not come in the form of an internship, but certainly be, would be working uh, with health providers on particular uh, projects that they would like to, to see some research undertaken in. And uh, we're looking to include our students in those opportunities. Yeah, and those, those networks which are built throughout the course within the industry are, are critically important for employment within Australia, regardless mm. of whether it's the healthcare sector or, or elsewhere as well. Uh, okay, we've got another anonymous. Uh, if the student doesn't have IELTS or another English test, uh, ELSIS online, we've answered that one already. Selected countries, yes. Generally speaking, it is um, th those countries are pretty limited. Um, can we package with English? Yes, uh, yes, like we mentioned before, for offshore students at the moment, while the borders um, remain closed, we do have the option of the online EAP. Um, how, however, we'll have the option of the on-campus EAP when, when, that, um, when that opportunity arises as well. Uh, if a student is willing to enroll in a package program, is there any deduction in the total tuition fee? Uh, no, because every it's calculated per unit um, as per the program. There's there's eleven units, but one of those units, I believe, is a double um, unit, so it's a, a factor of twelve, uh, which the uh, which the um, course is delivered in. And as Dr. Uh, Muhammad mentioned earlier, the graduate certificate is uh, the first three subjects of the overall uh, master's program. After the, after the completion of this program, on what occupation can they get a skill assessment on? Um, this is a migration question, which I believe we'll have to take on notice um, and we'll, um, we'll respond accordingly. Okay, and this is a very good question. What's the face-to-face -face component versus online component each year? And uh, that's from Budry at Uni Explore. And I believe we should um, answer this question in the context of um, normal operations. Uh, normal operations uh, when the world uh, corrects itself. So, do you, do you want to have a go at that one, Mohammed, or do you want me to go? Uh, um, well, we are preparing now the program to be completely delivered uh, online. Uh, however, the original design of the program before COVID uh, uh, hit the world was 100% uh, face-to-face. But now um, we have uh, completely transformed uh, the whole program into uh, the online uh, environment. Um, but that uh, doesn't exclude students from uh, attending face-to-face. Uh, yeah. at the campus when they are on shore. So when get the, the, the same equivalent uh, learning. So when the students said, um, and Muhammad's quite right, but when, the when we are back to normal and it's, um, um, our students are able to freely travel to Australia, then um, uh, whilst the online materials will still be available for them, and, and that of course provides um, a, a significant proportion of what they'd need to be successful in the program, we still will be requiring and, and offering uh, um, a couple of hours a week uh, on campus for each subject for the students to work with their educator um, and with each other on um, deepening their learning based on the materials that they can access online. Okay, and I've got a question. I believe this one fits well in Mahima's zone. So will a three years Bachelor of Nursing program uh, from Nepal uh, be able to apply for the Masters of Health Management or not? If it's equivalent to Bachelor or more equivalent, then yes. So you can send us the documents and we'll check. 
okay. because it depends on two things. One's the duration of the course and then the university as well. So it's a combination of both. Okay, fantastic. So um, we've reached the end of the, of the question. So we'll just pause here for a second, just to see if there's any um, further questions that do, do pop up in the Q&A. Um, but uh, might pass over to Andrew just to see if he's got any final thoughts before we um, wrap up the session. Uh, thanks, Stefan. It's um, been a pleasure to talk to you all. And uh, thank you for the um, multiple questions that have come through. It's very good to clarify all those matters. And um, as uh, Stefan was saying, if you do have any particular questions around your um, uh, students um, and the uh, GT requirements in particular, then your account manager, um, ECA account manager, is certainly the first point of call for those. Um, there is lots of information on the website. Um, you can drill down into there uh, and, uh, and get some more details should you wish. Um, but uh, we're very happy to respond to any other questions for further information, again, either through your account managers. Um, and then uh, uh, if there's um, information that we uh, uh, determine requires a more holistic response, then we'll update the website and, and then uh, uh, communicate about that um, to our agent networks too. And, and I guess there's uh, just one, uh, I'll just pass over to Mohammed for, I guess, a, a preemptive welcome uh, to, to, the, to all the students that all the agents on board will be, uh, will be sending. Yeah, thank you very much, Stefan. It's, it's our pleasure to have all of you um, as agents and, and representatives uh, with us and uh, you can deliver our message uh, to our uh, potential students and welcome them in the in the college uh, very soon in 2022. Okay, so thank you very much. I'll just double check that there's no further uh, questions that have come through and there hasn't. So thank you very much for your time. Um, as I mentioned, this, uh, this recording will be added to the YouTube channel uh, of Education Centre of Australia. It'll also be available on the um, agent platform, which we have uh, with all the training and relevant materials for you. So thank you very much for your support. Uh, thank you very much for your future support. And we look forward to you sending lots of applications to Mahima um, so we can accommodate them for Mohammed and uh, Andrew. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day.